like if this is the subject matter <laughs> and the majority of the world is looking at that subject matter from this angle, he'll come over from this angle. It's all still the same subject matter, like the integrity is, is there. The, the ability to look at it from a different side and to shed light on that, I find really fascinating. And that has gone hand in hand with the business model that I have of having a really neurodiverse team and recognizing that there are a lot of different ways to think about something and there are a lot of different ways to solve a problem. I love the surprise that that gives to my brain <laughs> when you see something that's been there the whole time but that has been invisible to me or to my brain and then someone else exposes it. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert and I founded and own a French inspired cafe where as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. I got my my kitchen set up going on today. I just have not been feeling filming this week, which is why it's waited until the end of the week and why I'm in my kitchen uniform versus something slightly cuter, which is kind of a bummer because on the off chance that Trevor Noah watches this video, I am not at my cutest, but that's okay. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be starting a new what will be reoccurring series or theme on our channel which is talking about my favorite thought leaders. What makes someone a thought leader that I want to follow? We're gonna dig into that more specifically today because today is the first one that we're doing, but then the thought leader that I'm highlighting today is Trevor Noah, if you know, you know. And then we'll do this probably periodically, like maybe every six to eight weeks or so, where I talk about another thought leader in the world that I respect, that I admire, that I go to for motivation, for inspiration, who'd help challenge or push me in my own thinking, in my own way of doing life. That ties into disability integration because disability integration is kind of this merge of taking the intellectual and then also the felt lived experience, putting those two things together and then making change in the world. My hope is to be a thought leader in the realm of disability integration. But as I've been pushing deeper into that over the past five or six years, it's been really helpful to observe other people who are leading thoughts and perspectives, not necessarily in the disability space, but in other areas of life that oftentimes have a lot of crossover in terms of taking what I'm learning in one area and then applying it to my own work. So that's, that's the tie in there. But for today, I'm gonna cover the five things that make a thought leader stand out to me, make someone, someone that I want to follow, that I want to learn from, and then going to specifically highlight Trevor Noah for being one of those thought leaders that I really admire and respect and who has pushed me and encouraged me in my own thinking. So here we go. Number one, <laughs> the number one thing that stands out to me as someone being a thought leader, which seems maybe self-explanatory in the title, is that they're an expert in their field or in their industry. Someone who has above average information or knowledge about a specific topic and who has the lived and the life experience to back that up. So someone who not just knows it intellectually, but also knows it in terms of how it's played out or how it's lived out in their life. Number two is someone who's also teachable. That combination of someone being an expert in their field, but also being teachable and willing to continue learning and not letting that learning stop. Who's willing to be humble enough and grounded enough that they can receive feedback, that they're open to push back against their thinking or their research and who's willing to still grow and change. So the, we use this word somewhat regularly here, but it applies again, the word dynamic. 
that it's not static, not someone who's like, I've learned it. Here you go. I've learned it. <laughs> Here's what I've learned. I have nothing else to learn. Like someone who is always in the process of learning, who has already done a lot of that learning, but is willing to keep growing and moving forward in whatever area of study, research, expertise, etc. they are in. The third thing is that they're relatable. This is gonna change for each person. So for me, as I'm looking for thought leaders that I admire and that I want to subscribe to in a sense, I'm looking for someone that I can relate to. That doesn't mean that we have to have all the same life experiences or that we have the same things in common. In fact, typically I prefer following people who have different life experiences and who have are coming from a different place than I am. So usually when I'm looking to relate to someone, I'm looking to relate to questions that they're asking, feelings that they might be feeling, values that they might have. That's also a really important one. Those are the things like I need to be able to tie in something that's important to me to something that is also important to that person in order for me to really get pulled in and to want to learn and to want to do or grow in other areas. Number four, someone that expands my thinking. We're gonna touch on all of these things with Trevor Noah in particular in just a moment, but this is one of the things that I really do appreciate about him is the way that it opens my eyes to new ideas, to new thought patterns, to new questions, to new perspectives. It takes maybe a thought or a stance that I've already had and then pushes it forward or pushes it deeper and challenges me to really add to or grow can you hear that bass, that beat outside? I was here the other day in my office and I had my dog with me, little Avery, who is deaf. She was sleeping in the chair in my office and a car went by and their bass was so strong and she felt the vibrations and she just went a little bit wild on me. And she's barking, I was like, it's already gone. I was trying to convince her she couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Anyways, someone who pushes me to think about something differently or who sometimes ideally this is a really exciting thing when it happens causes me to have a breakthrough in an area where maybe something that I've been kind of looping around in my mind or I've been trying to get to the bottom of all of a sudden I'll be like oh like it'll click there's that light bulb moment because someone has just brought a new perspective or they've provided information that I didn't have on my own and I really love and respect that feeling and then number five thought leader some Someone, <laughs> I look, it feels very brave of me to say that I want to be a thought leader when I'm having trouble even constructing my sentences right now, but tie into relatable if anyone else, <laughs> like if you're looking for someone to relate to, hopefully I've got you covered on that front. I want someone who can keep me company. And what I mean by that is that the life, the kind of the pioneer life of wanting to push forward into a space that maybe a lot of other people haven't pushed into before or pursuing work that a lot of other people haven't pursued before or looking at work or life from a different perspective and trying to break the way that our culture is currently doing something and encourage us to do something different. That process can be really lonely and really isolating and it's rare that I find people that I feel like are operating out of a similar place or on the same wavelength. Someone that I don't always have to explain myself or my process to. And so even though in this example of thought leaders, I don't know Trevor Noah personally, although I would like to, I think we would be good friends. There's a sense of camaraderie. I think that's one of the powerful things about the internet and social media and all the different outlets where you can like this, or you can get to know someone that you wouldn't otherwise have gotten to know. And yes, there's a one-sided aspect to it and that the conversation is not going back and forth, but I think there is power in people not feeling so alone. And that's one of the beautiful things I think about social media. I think about that in regards to a lot of different things, but I've reflected on that recently. I've been honest on here before that I have OCD, there's a video here if you didn't know that and you want to check it out where I talk a little bit about what that's like for me. But when I was diagnosed with OCD, I was 16. That was almost 20 years ago. And the internet and people and TikTok, 
TikTok and, and Instagram, like that wasn't a thing then. And there, there weren't these spaces where people were talking openly online about mental health and about what their own experiences were like. And so I was the only person that I knew who had OCD and I felt so alone in that. Like I didn't feel like there was anyone for me to relate to. And now just in the process of getting to explore the internet and find other people who can talk about things that I also talk about or feel and be like, oh, you too. Like, I'm not alone in this. Like that can feel, that feels grounding somehow, even though there's not the face-to-face contact. So those are the five things. Expert in their field, teachable, relatable, expands my thinking, keeps me company. That brings us to my thought leader for today's video. Trevor Noah, if you don't know the inside joke-ish, I mentioned in the video that I did about Shane Gillis and his monologue that I appreciate and like Trevor Noah's comedy. Trevor Noah is one of my favorite comedians. Oftentimes he takes subject matter that an audience would oftentimes not be willing to listen to and through comedy delivers it in a way that becomes very approachable and his audience then is able to receive it. I got a lot of hate comments on that video and surprisingly the one that I got the most was people who felt some kind of way about the fact that I like Trevor Noah as a comedian, which was not the pushback that I was expecting from that video. So that was interesting. And then it's just kind of become, I run with it. You know, it's like, all right, if you're gonna, if you're gonna give me a hard time for something that I like, I'm still gonna like it and I'm gonna talk about it more. That's the reason why he is the honorary first thought leader that I am talking about. Cheshinous teammates, your key word this week is blossom. I have been following his career and kind of path and thinking for, I don't know, longer than this business has been around. So more than six years, but I'm gonna talk specifically about the time frame that I've had this business so that there's that that overlap. Got introduced to him through my sisters actually and through The Daily Show when he was on The Daily Show and then have enjoyed his comedy, have enjoyed his stand-up specials. have gone to see him live twice in person, once to go see his stand-up in Charlotte, and then once earlier this year, Wake Forest University, which is in Winston-Salem, about 30 minutes from me, has a face-to-face -face series that they do every year, and so that's an actual conversation. Like there's someone who's facilitating the conversation and then the thought leader, and I got to go see Trevor Noah, Christmas gift from my parents. Thank you, mom and dad. So those are two very different experiences because one was very comedy based and one was much more like intellectual and kind of current events based. I don't know where I was going with all of that. Honestly though, the face-to-face -face format, it was just an hour. I'm usually someone who is very mindful of time passing and has a hard time being present and just kind of getting lost in the moment. I got lost in the moment during that conversation. I was so happy to be there, but I like his comedy. I like the way that his comedy makes me think. I think he does a really good job of approaching subjects and current events and politics and cultural experiences and race and racism in a format then becomes very digestible for his audience and, and encourages people to think or to actually observe something differently through laughing about it. Remember when they tried to change the $20 bill? Remember that? Yeah, they said they were gonna put Harriet Tubman on the bill. People got so angry, they've postponed it indefinitely. <laughs> People were furious. They're like, what are you doing? They're like, we're gonna put Harriet Tubman. They're like, how dare you? How dare you take an American president off the 20? How dare you take, who's on the 20? <laughs> how, how dare you take Andrew Jackson off the $20 bill? People are like, they're not taking him off. They're just putting Harriet Tubman on the front and Andrew Jackson will be on the back. You're putting an American president on the back? On the back? That's disrespectful. It's not really. I mean, if you know your history, you would know Andrew Jackson would love to be on the backside of a black woman. So I don't know why you're so stressed. I feel like everybody wins. And then I read his book during the pandemic. So I have these very clear memories of like sitting in my backyard. That was also a gift to get lost in the stories of his book and a time when I was experiencing a lot of stress and isolation and then have been enjoying the podcast that he started over this past year. Your mother was a black South African and your father was a Swiss white man. Yeah, they still are. Great, and they were also. 
and you were born a crime, hence the name of the book. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to sit down one day with, with somebody who like worked in the apartheid government or who ran the system to try and understand it from their point of view. I guess they didn't want that either because it just upended their rules or because it exposes the fact that black people and white people can have sex and make things. Right. So you know they I mean? were, it was illegal for your mother and father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fully illegal. Other, fully, fully illegal. Which is what made it so hot. And, uh, <laughs> and, and there, but, and so therefore you were, you were not, you were actually oh born a crime. Like literally you would yeah. have been taken, you probably yeah. would have been taken away. No, no, not, not probably. Definitely. If they knew I would have definitely been taken away. So those are kind of the formats that I have been connected or stay in touch, but on the points that I listed earlier, I do appreciate his intelligence how I feel like he has an ability to take, like if this is the subject matter, <laughs> and the majority of the world is looking at that subject matter from this angle, he'll come over from this angle. And it's, it's all still the same subject matter, like the integrity is, is there. The, the ability to look at it from a different side and to shed light on that, I find really fascinating. And that has gone hand in hand with the business model that I have of having a really neurodiverse team and recognizing that there are a lot of different ways to think about something and there are a lot of different ways to solve a problem. And I love the surprise that that gives to my brain <laughs> when you see something it's been there the whole time, but that has been invisible to me or to my brain, and then someone else exposes it. It's very exciting, and it helps me to continue to do that work of my team of being willing and able to look at something from different perspectives, and then also acknowledge and be excited when someone else sheds light on something that I wasn't previously aware of. I also, kind of tying into the relatability and the keeping me company aspect, have found that Trevor Noah's fascination with humans and humanity and the world and how people interact together, what inspires them, what motivates them. I'm very much intrigued and fascinated by the why, the why behind the things that people do. And I see those same curiosities in him. And so that's encouraging and exciting, but he has a lot of life experiences that I don't and has a lot more cultural and global experiences that I don't both because he was born and raised in South Africa, but then also he's just traveled the world a lot more than I have and so has gotten to meet and experience a lot of different people groups and cultures and countries and, and then takes that and brings it back into all of these different things that he's thinking about, but finds like the common threads amongst all of it. And that's something that I'm also really passionate about is looking for the ways that our humanness makes us more alike instead of more different and extending a greater sense of understanding or compassion or curiosity to people because of what ties us together instead of what could potentially pull us apart. I could ramble on about this for quite a while. I'm gonna cut myself off now, one, because it's time, this video is gonna to get too long, and two, because I need to go. <laughs> I need to finish up my work day. But we'll, I'll be back, I'll be back. This is something that we're gonna to continue to pick up. If you are looking to get more involved, more involved with us, we would love for you to subscribe to this channel. But if you're interested in learning more about Trevor Noah, then checking out his podcast. He has several stand-up specials that have been released on Netflix, watching some of the Daily Show episodes on YouTube, or listening to the Daily Show podcast. He's not on the show anymore, but has a lot of, there's a lot of content and material from when he was, and then his book. I highly recommend his book. I read it. I have also heard great things about the audiobook because he reads it. Either way, it's fantastic, very interesting. He's a great storyteller and that gives you a lot more insight. I'm not really talking about his life because that's his to talk about. And you can read his book if you're interested in that. But I'm grateful for people in the world who are willing to share the way that they look at the world with the world and who are willing to still learn but not ashamed about what they bring to the table in the process and are confident and able to stand in the thoughts and the views that they do have. All that being said, signing off. I hope you have a great week. Thanks for being here. So happy to have you in our YouTube community. We'll see you soon. Do you have any questions or anything? What took me so long to get to Baltimore? The traffic. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Because the show was postponed. Yeah, so we had, we had some knock-on postponements because I think one was COVID. Um, 
Was it what? Was it Chris Rock? I like you, what's happening? Like, bring me into your world, wait. Tell me more, tell me more. The week I was supposed to perform in March, a week later, Chris Rock filmed his special where he addressed getting slapped. Did Chris Rock knock me off? No. I love that you were like, you were watching all of this and you were like, ooh. This is amazing. You thought Chris Rock knocked me out of Baltimore and then I couldn't perform because of him. That's amazing. No, Chris, first of all, Chris would never do that to me. Like as comedians, especially comedians who are friends, we, we do a good job of knowing where everyone's performing. But I, I really love this idea. <laughs> you thought I had beef, I was sitting there. You were watching Chris Rock's thing waiting for me to come out and slap him. <laughs> Keep my week out your month. Ha, ha, ha.